6.1, discrete random variables. We typically denote a random variable with the letter X. A random variable is a numeric measure of the outcome from a probability experiment, so its value is determined by chance. Suppose we have a quarter, and we're going to flip that quarter two times. So X is the number of heads in two flips of the coin. So the possible values for X are zero, because you could land on tails both times, one, because you could land on heads one time and tails the other, and two, because you could get heads both times. A discrete random variable has either a finite or countable number of values. So if you take a look at the number line, your values are going to fall on those whole numbers. A continuous random variable has infinitely many values. So if you look at the number line, you have all the values in between those whole numbers that could be possible values for your variable. Let's take a look at an example. Determine whether the following random variables are discrete or continuous. State possible values for the random variable. The number of cups of coffee sold at the Berlin Coffee House that are decaf. Well, that's countable, so that's going to be discrete. You can place those numbers on a number line, and they are the whole numbers. The number of people on a cruise ship, again, they're countable, they're finite. The length of time between commercial breaks in a sitcom. Now this one's going to be continuous because you could have, and depending on the unit of measurement, you could say minutes, you could have one minute or two minutes, but you could also have one and a half minutes, one and a quarter minutes, and so on. So you're, if you were to plot those values on a number line, they could fall in between the integers. All right, so what is a probability distribution? Well, it gives all possible outcomes and their probabilities. So here's an example of a probability distribution. So you have all the values for X and then all the probabilities of the occurrence of X. We could look at this in a histogram or we could look at it as the table that we just looked at. So here's a histogram that basically shows the same information, it's just displayed differently. Okay, so your X values are along the X axis and your probabilities are along the Y axis. Some rules for probability distributions. And these are very similar to the rules that we did when we looked at probability. Okay, first we're gonna let P of X denote the probability that the random variable X equals this lowercase x. So then, the sum of all the probabilities has to equal 1. Hopefully you remember that from when we talked about probability. And then also, each probability of x has to be between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1. You can't have a negative probability, and you can't have a probability that's greater than 1. The mean of a discrete random variable is given by this formula, mu sub x, is equal to the sum of each x value times its probability. So you take the x value times the probability and add that to the next x value and it times its probability and so on and so forth. Again, x is the value of the random variable and p is the probability of observing that value. So let's take a look at an example. Compute the mean of the probability distribution to the right, which represents the number of DVDs a person re rents from a video store during a single visit. So here's our probability distribution. So if they rent zero videos, if they go into the store and they don't rent any videos, there's a probability um, that's about a 6% chance. The chance of them going in and renting one is about 58%, renting two, 22%, 3 is 10%, 4 is 3%, and 5 is only 1%. So we're going to compute the mean of the probability. So we're going to take all of the x values and multiply them by their probabilities, and then we're going to add all of those values up. So we get 
1.49. So the mean of this probability distribution is one and a half videos. Now the following data represent the number of DVDs rented by 100 randomly selected customers in a single visit. Compute the mean number of DVDs rented. So here's all of our data, and we can plug that into the calculator and find our mean, and we get 1.49, which happened to be the same as our probability distribution. So the more times, because we had 100 trials there, the more times, the more trials we have, the closer and closer our mean is going to get to our th theoretical mean. So you notice, if you just look at the first person going in and looking at how many they rent, um, it's going to be much, much different from when you compare that to 100 people and you find the mean of 100 people renting DVDs. The expected value is basically the mean of a random variable um, and that it, it represents what we would expect to happen in the long run. So the expected value is really the same thing as the mean. All right, so let's take a look at an example that uses an expected value. A term life insurance policy will pay a beneficiary a certain sum of money upon the death of the policy holder. These policies have premiums that must be paid annually. Suppose a life insurance company sells a $250,000 one year term life insurance policy to a 49 year old female for $530. According to the National Vital Statistics Report, in volume 47, number 28, the probability the female will survive the year is 0 0.9791. So it's about 99.791%. Compute the expected value of this policy to the insurance company. Okay, so we're going to compute the expected value of the policy to the insurance company. So here's our table. Okay, so we have an X that she survives, that's the $530, okay, and the probability that she's going to survive is 0.99791. Now, if she doesn't survive, then the company, the insurance company keeps that $530, but they're paying out $250,000. So now the X value is negative $249, um, dollars and, or I'm sorry, $249,470. And that probability was 0 0.00209. And all we did to get that was subtract it, um, subtract the P of X, the P of 530 from one. Because remember, all your probabilities have to add up to one. All right, so our expected value is the sum of the product of each X and its P of X. So we're just gonna multiply our numbers and we get $7.50. Or $7 so the company expects to make an average of $7.50 for every 49-year-old female it insures. Now, because this is a long-term result, the insurance idea will not work if only a few people are insured. It's based on large numbers. All right, the standard deviation of a discrete random variable is given by this formula. And notice that we're using sigma, so it's a population standard deviation. And so it's going to be the square root of the sum of all of the x minus the mean quantity squared times the probability of x, the sum of all of those. Now there's another formula also. Um, now keep in mind that x is the value of the random variable. Um, mu sub x is the mean of the random variable and p of x is the probability of observing a value of that random variable. So we'll talk about um, how to use this formula, but then we'll also look at how to do it on the calculator in class. All right, so let's take a look at this example. Compute the variance and the standard deviation of the following probability distribution, which represents the number of DVDs a person rents from a video store during a single visit. And it's the same table that we've been using. Now remember that the mean that we found was 1.49. All right, so here's our table. We've got our column of X's. We've got our column of mu. 
So then we have our column of x minus mu, and then we have our column of squaring the x minus mu. Then we have our p of x um, values, and then we have the product of the x or of the um, p of x, and then the the fourth column. Okay, so we get all of those values. And so then we just add them up. So we add up that far right column and we get 0.8699. And so that, um, that is the uh, variance. And then we take the square root of that to get our standard deviation. So we get 0 0.9327. So the standard deviation of this distribution of DVDs that have been um, rented is 0.9327.